today I'm looking at possibly the most controversial part of an 82, 70, 90, even some 30s I guess could have them. Uh, this is a light ball sensor. And it looks complicated and that's the major complaint that people have. That it's hard to maintain, it's hard to set. Um, you have to be real precise to get it right. Uh, you do have to be precise. And if it's not right, it won't work. Uh, just like anything else. So, I'm gonna go over kind of how it works first. <clears throat> so this is, this is where the rudder goes. So this is sitting right under the ball lift. And basically, your pulley here is gonna drive the rudder back and forth, turning the whole assembly. And then when your rudder encounters resistance, like a bowling ball or a pin, and it tries to drive, you can see this cam slips, slips past out of the middle so that the rudder stays still, but the pulley still turns and the drive still turns. And then you've got trip cams up here. Well, this is, this is your trip cam. These are cam followers. These cam followers up here are connected to these cams down here. You can see when my trip cam pushed this cam follower back, it locked this down. So next time we try to drive that way, it can't slip because that cam's down in the way. And then when whatever resistance is here is gone, whether it's pushed the pin out of the door, or the ball's gone up the lift, the whole assembly is going to be able to come back over. And your reset cam here pushes this cam follower back forward, which pulls your little locking cam back up out of the way. And it's the same thing for the other way. So <clears throat> if we're blocking our rudder arm from moving in this direction and this pulley drives back you can see trip cam pushes our cam follower back and then when this cam follower in the front comes back over that latch drops now when we push I'm pushing with everything I got and it won't move because this arm's stuck from a pin or a bowling ball and this cam this cam follower down, so it can't get past. And now when our jam clears up here, the ball goes up the lift or the pin's pushed out of the way, we're gonna come back over, hit the reset cam, and open it back up. And then, just like that, we can go back and forth again. Now it's locked, and we can unlock. That's all we're doing, pushing this cam follower back and forth. So all you gotta do is hold your rudder still, let the machine drive the thing, and just watch. Adjust this trip cam to where when it's locked, it'll push it down without binding up or anything, and it'll push it all the way down so that this engages. And then set your reset cams to where at the full length of the drive, it's touching to where when it's pushed back, it'll push it all the way back forward. Now the other important uh, piece to adjust is this rod right here, but that's just how far back and forth it's going. So if you got full range of motion, your rod's right. If it's too short, if your range of motion is too short, your rod's too short. And if you're coming over here and really pushing, then the rod's too long, shorten it up. That's the only adjustments on the thing, is reset cams, uh, trip cam, and this rod. And all the cleaning you gotta do, I sprayed it with carb cleaner just a second ago, and wiped it down with a rag. When I put it in, I'll put a little oil there, a little oil there, and a little oil on these bushings on the back, on the rudder drive. But that's it. That's all it takes, and that's every, every six months or something something ridiculous so and now that this is set 
I'm not gonna have to touch it ever. You know, they don't come unset. Uh, as long as hardware stays tight and everything. Now, obviously you're gonna start to get some wear on these cams and on this cam along the bottom, but everything's gonna wear. Uh, one important thing is to keep most of this dry, except for those little places where you get a drop of oil. You gotta keep everything dry so that this, this cam follower can't slip past here. Uh, that's why it's got to be dry, so that this cam follower gets locked on these when they're down, like it's supposed to. But other than that, that's all there is to it. Uh, I kind of threw this together real quick, uh, just to kind of check this thing out. But I think this is a pretty good angle to look at how it works. Now to put it back in is real easy. All I gotta do, make sure that arm's up where it's supposed to be. And then this guy, I got four bolts, one in each corner. this right back on. That's a 9 16 and I got my 9 16 up in the pit on this machine. washer short on this one.
trying to film and everything at the same time. Kind of a pain in the ass. Should have brought my daggum GoPro with me. I wasn't expecting to get into this. Then I saw that that conversation on the Facebook group about the LBS was still going. I just thought, man, I gotta, I gotta throw my two cents in here. I can't sit here and watch this keep going on. Misinformation and misconception. You know, I kind of, I do these kind of for fun, but I hope that in the process, I can teach somebody a thing or two. You know, I'm not just doing it for my health. I certainly don't know it all, but what I do know, I'm willing to put out there for the betterment of the industry, and it's kind of a kind of a tough job, you know. It's underpaid in pretty much all parts of the country because there's no... There's no respect, really, for somebody who does the job well um, when some schmo off the street that doesn't know what he's doing will take a facility manager job for $14, $15 an hour, and the machines will run. They don't run great, and they don't run right, but they run. Um, and it makes guys... Uh, I don't want to drop names, but... Guys that really know what they're doing, it devalues their labor you know, when people like that have the same position. And for whatever reason, the these are machines just like in any other industry, and any other industrial process. You know, we're just setting bowling pins instead of making car parts or something. And somebody that doesn't value preventive maintenance and doesn't keep the machines clean and take care of them, there's really no place for that kind of person in any kind of industry working on any piece of equipment. Uh, I mean, if you don't change the oil in your car and rotate your tires, your car's gonna quit working. And for some reason, people think that we can just run these machines and, you know, when they break, just fix them then instead of doing a little PM. And I think that's the big difference between those $14, $15 dollar an hour guys and the guys that should be making $25 or $30 an hour um, that come in every day and bust their ass doing the, the boring stuff, dropping oil and checking belts you know it takes it takes a little bit of time to do those things but it saves a lot of pain in the ass it it saves the embarrassment of having a bowler say hey my lane's broken down you know god forbid you got a full house and the damn something breaks you got to pull something out and rebuild it right there or swap the whole assembly out because you didn't check a belt <laughs> you know I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of things that could be done differently. And I hate to see it done the wrong way. I hate to see misconceptions spread. I hate to see misinformation spread. Um, but anyway, let's get to testing this thing. Basically, I use my long 3H drive extension. And I stick it in the hole under here this hole and then I basically act like there's a ball in there right so the paddle will come over and I'll hold it watch it slip and then lock and then we're gonna make sure it unlocks and it did so slip lock now I'm gonna give it a second and I'm gonna do it back the other way slip lock now watch it reset there we go She's good to go. I got good travel. 
you can see there's a little bit of movement where the pulley's still pushing even though the paddles reach the end of its drive. That's good. We want that little bit of hesitation at the end so that we can push stuff out, push the pin out and it'll stay out instead of just rolling right back into the door. So that's, we want that little bit. You see the trip cam move after the whole assembly stops. We want just a little bit, just like that. That's all there is to a light ball sensor, guys. Um, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook or comment on the video or whatever. You know, I'm I'm open to help anybody in any way I can. You know, I like to see I like to see things done the right way. Everywhere. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.